Hello, it's John Cresswell. Uh, this is another video in the series on learning how to do mixed methods research. And the topic today is going to be how to draw a diagram of your mixed methods procedures. What I want to talk about are at least three important points. One is why we use diagrams and why they're important. And then factors to consider when uh, beginning to think about drawing your diagram. And then finally, the steps in actually drawing a diagram. Let's begin with just a basic definition of what a diagram is. It's, it's a drawing or a figure that presents the procedures in your mixed methods project. That includes your data collection, your data analysis, and your interpretation. Uh, these diagrams have been around for about a decade now. Uh, I first started drawing them around 2003, and uh, it occurred after talking with a federal project officer who was receiving many different uh, mixed methods projects uh, for possible funding. And this project director said to me, uh, John, we, we like your mixed methods projects, but they're so complex that we can't figure out what people are doing. You've got a lot of quantitative and qualitative types of data coming into them. And so at that point we began drawing diagrams, very simple pictures of our procedures that would help a reader and perhaps a funding officer understand the mixed methods project. Our basic intent was to kind of simplify the mixed methods procedures and prevent, present them in a very straightforward way. It's useful because these diagrams and, and procedures and mixed methods have many flowing parts. Multiple quantitative and qualitative data collection steps, multiple quantitative and qualitative data analysis steps, and different interpretation steps. So mixed methods designs can be hard to understand. And drawing a picture, I think, simplifies them and presents them so that people can understand what's going on. You know, we do have many diagrams we use in research, such as diagrams of our theories. So why can't we also have diagrams of our procedures that we might use in mixed methods research? The application of these diagrams are really multiple. You could use them if you're a graduate student when you're presenting your dissertation project. So you could present them to your committee. You can put these diagrams into journal articles in your mixed methods study. You can put these diagrams into a, a, an application or proposal for funding. And of course, when you're presenting your mixed methods project at a conference, they become a useful picture to convey to the audience the exact procedures in your study. There are some tools that you need in order to best draw these diagrams. First of all, you need a, a, some type of a computer drawing program. Now, I personally use PowerPoint because I like to draw diagrams in PowerPoint and they seem to be easy to do. Other people might use a word processing program like Word. I've also seen people use Excel files as a means for drawing diagrams. But the key point is to have some type of a drawing program and it may even require purchasing a specialized computer drawing program that are out there on the market. Another tool is you need to know what design you're going to use. You need to think about your basic design and possibly an advanced design. You might consider also notation and I'm going to review some of the notation that goes into these designs in a moment. And then finally, you need to think about what are the array of possible features that you can put into this design. Let's first talk a little bit about notation. Notation really uh, can be somewhat complex, and there are many different ideas about notation that have developed since the early 1990s. This slide indicates the basic notation that's typically used in a mixed methods diagram. First of all, upper case letters indicate priority given either quantitative or qualitative, whereas lower case letters often indicate lesser priority. 
you can use a plus to indicate when two databases converge. And probably most importantly is the use of an arrow to indicate sequence, sequence in a design. Now there are other less used notation features out there uh, that have seemed to have fallen out of favor in recent years. If you're going to embed a qualitative part within an, an experiment, for example, you might use brackets. Uh, you could have uh, quotation uh, parentheses also around different studies, around different parts of your project. So there's some other notation features. So what we'll see in our diagrams typically are the use of arrows and possibly the use of uppercase or lowercase to emphasize priority or emphasis for the quantitative or qualitative features. Now what has happened too in recent years is there are good checklists out there on what to put into a diagram. Uh, this is one from uh, the journal Field Methods that Ivan Kova, Stick, and myself developed a few years ago. And it has some of the key features that you would see in a good mixed methods diagram. First of all, there needs to be a good descriptive title. The diagram could be drawn either vertically or horizontally. The use of uppercase or lowercase letters to indicate priority. We often put the key stages in the design in boxes. So data collection would go in a box, data analysis would go in the box. I'm going to show you these in a moment. Uh, when we make an interpretation in our mixed methods design, it's often illustrated with a circle. As I said a few minutes ago, the, the arrow can indicate a flow of procedures. And we want to indicate at each stage in our, in our procedure the different steps that might be used. So I'm going to indicate specific procedures that relate to data collection, specific procedures that relate to data analysis. We can also put into our diagram products. And these are uh, the types of outputs that we get at each stage in our project. These are often required by the federal government. <clears throat> we want to keep the language consistent and simple and straightforward. We often want to put this diagram on a single page and sometimes we put timelines into our diagrams. So I'm going to illustrate all these features that you can use to build a very informative diagram of your mixed methods procedures. <clears throat> there are some steps that I would recommend. I would begin by creating four boxes quantitative and qualitative data collection analysis, and then I would add into that interpretation. I would also start by putting into my diagram first the basic design, and then I would add the advanced design features after that. I'm going to indicate some of the procedures at each step with bullet points and then also with bullet points indicate some of the products at each one of the stages. And you'll see in some of these diagrams I'm going to show you that uh, there's a timeline, we might indicate phases, uh, you could even put color coding to indicate uh, qualitative research is blue and quantitative research is green. So you can use color coding in some of these diagrams. I want to return to a figure that I presented before of the three basic designs. The convergent parallel design, the explanatory sequential design, and the exploratory sequential design. And what you can see here is that I've drawn boxes around data collection and analysis, uh, the results, and then the interpretation phases. And you can also see in this diagram that I have some arrows that indicate the, the flow of activities in the mixed methods project. So uh, you don't need to think up what your diagram might be in terms of a basic design. You could use one of these as a model for your basic design. I also want to return to a figure of advanced designs. 
basically we have three types of advanced designs an intervention mixed methods design a social justice design and a multi-stage evaluation design and what we have here in each one of these three designs is a basic design at the center surrounded by a box that indicates the advanced design so you can see in this diagram uh, on an intervention design there's a box around the experimental study and within it we see a quantitative project followed by a qualitative follow-up. So let me kind of step you through the procedures in actually drawing one of these diagrams. I said the first step is to just put some boxes in for quantitative and qualitative data collection analysis and interpretation. So here we see five, we see four boxes and then a circle for our interpretation. Remember I said when we make an interpretation we often use a circle in our diagrams. Then I add in arrows to show the sequence. First quantitative data collection is followed by quantitative data analysis. And then along the side I put bullets for specific procedures. And notice how these procedures array right alongside each one of the major boxes. So I'm indicating procedures are going to be used at each one of the stages in this mixed methods project. I add into this a title. So I would call this a figure. I would put it, the figure at the bottom of the page and I would call it, for example, a convergent mixed methods design of, and then give the topic of your study. Now, you can put a timeline into these designs, and I often array these on the right. Uh, you can indicate days or months or time periods, whatever your timeline might be, but you can put that into your diagram. We're going to also put products into this diagram at each stage. So you notice how the products array right alongside each one of the major boxes. And in this particular example, it's a convergent mixed method design. So it's a single phase design. So somewhere in the diagram, I would also put phase one, single phase design. Now this is a fairly complete diagram with useful information that tells the reader about the major phases of the project, the procedures, the products, and a timeline. Now we can go to a sequential basic mixed methods design. So here's an example of putting boxes and circles in. Uh, I put quantitative, this is a, a, an explanatory sequential design, so you can see I have first quantitative data collection, quantitative data analysis, followed by qualitative data collection analysis, and then an interpretation circle. Below each one of these boxes, I'm going to put procedures that relate to each stage in, in the process, and I'm going to indicate the products at each stage. Notice how I've also put arrows in to indicate the flow of activities here. I'm going to give this a name, an explanatory sequential mixed method design of whatever topic I'm studying. I'm going to identify the phases. and I'll put the phases up at the top. You can see here I've indicated months for each phase. Quantitative data collection, for example, would occur during the months of September and October. And I'm going to put into my circle information about the interpretation. In this case, the qualitative data is used in an explanatory sequential design to interpret the quantitative findings. So I'm going to put that information about interpretation into the interpretation circle. So what we have here is a fairly complete explanatory sequential design diagram with major boxes indicating the flow of activities, the procedures, the products, a timeline, a title, and the phases. 
Now you may be asking yourself, what do I put in the bullets for the procedures? Well, first of all, we don't have a lot of space in diagrams for five or ten different types of procedures. So you need to think about what are the most essential points to put in a diagram to help the reader understand your project. In data collection, I often think about the participants. I want to put a bullet about who the participants are. So say adolescent girls. And then I want to put in information about sample size. My sample size might be 200. And then the forms of data collection. Well, it might be interviews or surveys. Those three elements, I think, go into bullets under the data collection phase. Some people like to put also the variables that they're, they are uh, measuring, especially in the quantitative phase of the project. What goes under the data analysis points, bullets? Statistical procedures that you're going to use, such as descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, or qualitative procedures such as codes and themes. So I would keep the bullets under the procedures limited. You notice in my examples I typically had three bullets and in this illustration I have just minimal information about data collection and analysis but, but the most important useful information for the person viewing this diagram. You may also be asking yourself, what do I put in the products? Recall that products are often the outputs at each phase of the research, and they're often required by the federal government. But uh, it might be useful for a graduate project as well. Under data collection products, what are you going to end up with? Uh, in the quantitative data collection, you'll have scores on instruments, in the qualitative data collection, you might have text data from transcripts, or you might have photographs, or you might have videotapes. In terms of the products under data analysis, I talk, often think about quantitative tables, or quantitative figures, or graphs reporting statistical results. These are the outcomes of your quantitative data analysis. In qualitative research, we often see figures or models or diagrams of the findings. So these are some outcomes of the data analysis that I would put in bullets under the products. Let me talk now a little bit about advanced designs. As I said, within each advanced design, with embedded within it is a basic design. It might be useful to have two diagrams. This illustrates an intervention design, advanced design. And basically what's going on is the experiment, the quantitative strand, is followed by the qualitative strand. That's the basic, the basic design going on. We would call that an explanatory sequential design. We might also call two-phase, quantitative followed by qualitative. Well, you can also draw a second diagram, which gives a more complete rendering of the procedures. So here we see the same project. There's an experiment, an intervention trial that compares an experimental control group, both pretest and post-test, with an intervention. And we add in the qualitative follow-up after the trial is over to explain the experimental results. We can call this, again, a two-phase project, the experiment followed by the qualitative phase. Now, under each one of the major boxes, just as we've done with the basic designs, we can array the procedures that would follow. What are the procedures used in selecting the experimental and control group? How will they be assigned? How many of them will be assigned? We can also put those procedures under the qualitative follow-up phase. Under each box, we can also array the products that we would expect to have. What products would we have from our group assignment? We would have people arrayed in the different groups ready to participate in the experiment. 
we can put those products into the qualitative follow-up as well. Just as in the earlier designs I've talked about, we can have a title. I would call this an intervention mixed method design and then of the content area I'm looking at. I can put in dates. So for example, the selection of the individuals for the experimental control group and their assignment would occur during November and December. My qualitative data follow-up after the experiment would occur in July or August of the next year. We can also put interpretation here. You know, how does the qualitative follow-up help explain the experimental results? So what we have now is a rather complete diagram picture of an intervention advanced mixed methods design that has embedded within it an explanatory sequential basic design. So in conclusion, here are some of the final recommendations I would have about drawing diagrams. First of all, it's important to have a diagram in every mixed methods project. It's a picture that's useful for your audience. It conveys the complexity of the procedures in a very simple way. Further, I would ask you to keep your diagram simple. One page. Don't have arrows going a lot of different directions. Keep your, your arrows indicating the flow of activities. Next, start by drawing your basic design. And then add to it an advanced design feature. If you have an experimental project or a social justice project or a project evaluation, add some of the detail into this diagram to provide full information for the audience that you're presenting it to. What is the detail that I would recommend? Procedures, products, timeline, a title, labeling the different phases of the project. In this way, I think you'll have a good diagram to share with people about your mixed methods procedures. And I'll suggest that they will understand your project much better when you use one of these diagrams. Thanks.